So, um, what I'm seeing is people have trouble on a number of things, okay? Sometimes we tr see trouble with fractional arithmetic, um, even with plotting points. And with solving linear equations, I didn't write the word linear. So we want to be sure that we emphasize those three things as we work through this. Now, you would need most of this to do the homework, okay? So if you did the homework, let, let, let me just say, if you're graphing and not writing it out on paper, you're just moving your mouse around and plotting points in open math, you're not really reinforcing what you do, you need to write everything out. Even if you can get the right answer in open math, just by clicking the mouse in a couple of places, uh, you're not really learning it as well. And of course, if all you do is write it out, well, there's something to be learned from moving the mouse around too. You do it both ways and then you learn it. Uh, if you don't, then uh, you're gonna, you're gonna Run into difficulty uh, when we have a test, okay? So you want to prepare yourself. Of course, a lot of you are running into very various difficulties in doing this problem, okay? So let's see how it works. Okay, first of all, I think everybody understands how to substitute X, and that's a very good start. Okay, so let's just write the table again. X equals negative four, then Y equals one half times negative four plus your B number. Now I'm going to use a B number of three. And of course, you all had different B numbers. Um, but if it was three, then we do the arithmetic, that's one half times negative four over one plus three, which is negative two plus three, which is one. Okay, I think everybody's okay until you get into a fraction over two. So we get y equals one, and I think everybody pretty much got that story. Now, when we get into the arithmetic of fractions, uh, and of course, I kind of skipped a step here, but you simply have to know how to multiply fractions. One times negative four is negative four. Two times one is two. You get negative four over two, and that's negative two. But I think everybody got that step, so I kind of skipped it. Okay, I'm going to include all the steps here. And y equals one half times negative one plus three. Well then, write that out, right? Numerator and denominator. Put a denominator under that whole number so you're sure that you see that you multiply numerators and denominators. At some point after you've done hundreds of these, you can start skipping that step, but right now, if you don't do that step, you're going to be vulnerable to make a mistake. So I want you to 
really reinforce this. It becomes really important when we get into some of the intermediate algebra that's coming up soon. Okay. So that becomes negative one, that's what your numerator is. Two times one is two. Okay. So let's take this step here. We're going to go up here where we can really examine it. So why is negative one half plus three? Well, to add fractions, and you might want to review the assignment of adding fractions early in the semester, early in the course. Okay? If you can't go back and do that without looking at stuff, you need to work it until you can. Okay? You simply have to be able to add fractions because it comes up in intermediate algebra with symbols. If you don't understand it well with numbers, you're going to be lost when we do it with symbols. So you really have to understand addition fractions. Okay, so now three is of course three over one. Denominator is one, it's not two. You can't add fractions unless you have the same denominator. Well then to get the same denominator, uh, we multiply by two over two. Multiplying by two over two doesn't change the value of this number because two over two is just one. And when you multiply by one, you don't change the value of the number you're multiplying. So we got negative one half plus six halves. Now, of course, you know six over two reduces down to three because you can divide two into six, you get three. There's no magic here, but this number has to equal this number. And if you do something so that the number you get here doesn't equal this one, you just change everything and you're gonna get a wrong answer. Now, the other thing is if you got, you got one half, so if you got negative one, oh, negative one half and six halves. Okay, negative a half and six halves comes out to five halves. Negative one or something and six of it gives you five. So you can, of course, do that formally but there's just a common sense to it. You're adding half, you got negative one of them here, you got six of them here, you're gonna get five. But you write that out by saying, okay, you got negative one plus six over two. Now, mathematically, we'd say, well, we can factor out the one half and it all works. But right now, I don't think that's gonna be well understood. Okay, so you get five halves, and of course, five halves, you're gonna put it on a graph, so you wanna put it here as a mixed number, not as a decimal, okay? You don't wanna see decimals. Even though open math uses a lot of decimals, uh, you don't wanna see decimals because they're not exact, because again, if you round to decimals, when you get symbols where you can't express things as decimals, you're going to need to understand how that works. Okay. So we do it as a mixed number with fractions. If you want to then say, okay, then that's equal to two and a half. Okay, as long as I see the fraction here. But what two and a half means is you go one, two, three, and then halfway between two and three, you get two and a half. Now, of course, you understand that 2.5 goes there also. Um, you want to be able to see it both ways. Okay, well, the point then is we get 2.5 here. Now, I'm not going to do the arithmetic on these because it's exactly identical to these, except that we have a plus four here, which is gonna give us a plus two plus three. It's gonna give us something wrong. Okay. 
going to pause for a second because these numbers just aren't lining up. Okay. Okay. There's five here. Uh, what I was doing was assuming equal increments over here when I wrote these numbers down, but I left a number out here and I don't have equal increments. Okay, so I was originally going to do equal increments. Okay, well, anyway. So when you multiply uh, for seven, you're going to get 6.5. And I just did what I said not to. I want to see the fractions. Okay. Now, if you want to remind yourself that that's 2.5, okay. But if I don't see the fractions, I'm going to think, well, you just plug that into a calculator and didn't do the arithmetic yourself, okay? You need to do this arithmetic. You need to do the arithmetic of fractions to prepare yourself for doing it with rational expressions. And I don't necessarily know what that means right now, but it's a, one of the maybe harder things in intermediate algebra. Okay, well, here we have it. So we have to get the algebra fraction to the arithmetic fractions uh, correct. Do you have a question? Yeah, just a minute. Just a minute. Okay, uh, all, all, all the noise there was the Secretary of Education and the Chancellor of the Community College System and everybody. They try to visit my classroom daily. Uh, <laughs> no, they, 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 they were doing the tour. And the guy hollered out these superintendent schools. I know him. Uh, but anyhow, good guy. Good guy. Uh, used to see him at the gym, but can't keep up with him. Okay. <laughs> so the question is how do we get to two and a half? Okay. <clears throat> well, One way would be a long division divide two into five. It goes two times. Two times two is four. We subtract the four, we get one. Okay. So it's two with the remainder of, it's supposed to be an R, and it's easy to read. Two with the remainder of one. And it was remainder of one. Mems means two and a half because you put this over this. Okay. Now, another way to visualize it is we got five. So, like we have uh, five units. And we want to. Divide them in half. Okay. Well, here's five. Leave myself room to do it like this. Here's five. Now, if we do half of that, where are we going to cut this in half? We're going to cut it in half here. Okay. So that's two and a half. It's two ways to see it. And another way to see it is you want to understand all this. You've got five. Here's again five. And we cut each of these into half. Okay, so there's one, two, three, four, five. Now we have ten halves.
put on that animal board here because I'm going to have trouble reading that. But it's like five equals 10 halves. So half of five is going to be five halves. So, so if you don't understand all of this, please review it and think about it until you really see it. Okay. So question is, why does one half equal 0.5? Okay. Well, if you divide two into one using the addition algorithm, You're going to put a point zero here because then you can divide two into 10, right? Two goes into 10 five times. There's a decimal here. Okay. Now you might need to review long division. And I really recommend that um, yeah, you work with somebody in the mark to do that. Okay. Uh, I don't really have materials. Open math doesn't go back that far. Okay, so this is pretty fundamental. Uh, so it, it's like you got, and here you divide it or you subtract it and it goes to zero. Okay, so there we have it. Another thing you can do is if you divide two into five and you want to get a depth, write five is 5.0 and divide two into five, that gives you two, you four here. Then you have one zero here, two into one zero is, well, two into 10 is five, and your decimal has to line here. Now this goes back to the long division we learned in elementary school and then nobody ever does it past that point. So it might be a little bit rusty, uh, but it's not too troublesome to learn, okay? So we wanna be sure that we understand uh, the arithmetic at that level. Okay, so what we're gonna wanna do now, so we've got a table is we wanna, so go one, two, three, four, and the negative four. One, two, three, four, six, seven is here. And then we get our values. Let's go from one to six and a half. Okay. Now I like to do that by just taking a power of two that is a little bigger than six and a half, that would be eight. So now I can divide the animal from eight to zero and half, and that's going to have to give me four. And I'm going to divide that in half um, to give me two. Then I can, I don't have to mark every number once I see but the even numbers are, it's pretty obvious that the marks in between. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, I need to plot this. So negative four, one. So your logic here is that x equals four. Every part on this line, every point on this line has an x coordinate of four. Is it right above or below? Oh, negative four. Sorry. It's right above or below negative four. Okay. If X is negative four, and this tells us that Y is going to be one, or is Y equal to one?
y equals one on the left line. So now we have a point. We could label that point negative four. One. Okay. Then we have negative one, two and a half. Well, let's look at where y equals two and a half. X equals negative one on this line. And two and a half is here between two and three. As this means we go two and then we take half of the next unit. Half of the next unit is halfway between two and three. Okay. So we have this point. Well, now x equals four, y equals five. So we skip all the way over here to where x equals four. And right here is where y equals five. So, and here's a point. And finally, if x equals seven, y equals two up. Six and a half is not 2.5, it's 6.5. Yeah, I'm trying to throw something at me when I wrote that. I need a little aversive condition. Okay, so when y is seven, x is 6. Point, or when x is seven, y is 6.5. So here's where x equals seven. And here's six, here's seven, halfway between six to seven. is 6.5. Now, how well did I do? Okay, if I put this thing on the graph, we see that those points appear to lie on a straight line, don't they? Now, this is a hand sketch graph, so some of them are a little high, a little lower, a little to the right, a little to the left. And if I could hold it still, we'd see though that yeah, this thing goes pretty close to the center of every edge. So if you draw a graph carefully, you can do that. Now, next thing is I'm going to try to draw a straight line through these points. And um, secret to drawing a good straight line is you look at where you're headed. Now I started a little to the left here, so I started a little bit low, didn't I? Because my line is a little below these two points. It goes right through these because I was looking at this point. Okay, so it should be a little higher over here. Uh, and that's going to be important in a minute. Okay, so let's just pause and see if we've got any questions about that process. Okay, everybody seems to be okay with this process. Now let's look at what happens if we substitute y equals zero. Well, we say y equals one half x plus three. If y equals zero, we get zero equals one half x plus three. Zero minus three. Well, I'm going to follow my rule for clearing fractions. Multiply everything in the equation by two. Multiply every term by two. Now there's a distributive law on the left, so really I should have written two times the quantity one half x plus three. So I skipped a step here, but we've emphasized that step. Okay. So you understand that step. Uh, and a couple of dots here. I'm skipping a little bit because it's fine. So two equals x plus six. 
a zero equals x plus six. So it's zero minus six equals x plus six minus six. So that x equals negative six. Okay, so when y equals zero, x equals negative six. We could then see that, well, y is zero when x equals negative six. So the point negative six and zero could be on the table. Okay. In other words, if we plug in x equals negative six, we're going to get y equals zero. We check this. I keep emphasizing that we need to check. Take x minus six, we plug it back in here, and we get. Actually, we plug it in this equation, and that gives us zero equals one half times negative six plus three, zero equals zero, and that's a check. Now, you can't necessarily see that if you're sitting in the back. Again, um, you can plan the space as well as I could have, but there we have it. So, this shows you when y. When x is negative six, that makes y zero. So the point zero, negative six should be on the graph. Okay. Now, where's the point zero, negative six? Well, if negative six, zero, I'm sorry. X equal negative six, y is zero. So if we go one, two, three, four. If we go five, six units here, here's the point. Right, zero first. Okay, so it's negative six, zero. Now that's important, that's called the x intercept. And the x intercept happens when y equals zero because y, well, y equals zero is the x-axis, isn't it? Every point on the x-axis lines up with y equals zero here. Okay. Then, If x equals zero, what's y? Well, whatever x is, y is one half x plus three, so y equals one half of zero plus three, which equals zero plus three which equals three. So when x equals zero, y equals three. So zero three should be on the graph. Well, actually, my line was somewhat low. It looks like zero two and a half is on my graph. I mean, it went right through two and a half there. Okay, but my graph was a little bit low. My line was a little bit low. But there's zero two and a half. Now, once more, if I Line everything up. Not sure what the angle of the camera is. I'm going to cut, wiggle this around so you can see above and below. We see that again, I've gone through every one of these points. These points here are on the same line as these points. And that line isn't quite the line I drew because it started too low over here. Okay. 
ton of audible if you're doing free hands. There are people who are a lot better at it than I am. Mine was reasonably flexible. Okay, makes sense. Well, there's your equation of a straight line. Okay, let me see where we want to go from here. Okay. Well, I just drew a graph, straight line, and said the y-intercept is this point here where the line hits the y-axis, or where the line passes through the y-axis. What's the x-coordinate of that point? Well, I quickly got an answer. The x-coordinate of this point is zero because it's directly above x equals zero. So the x coordinate is zero. Over here, we have the x intercept. The y coordinate. Is zero. Okay. So to find The x intercept, without putting too many words on it, the idea is just to substitute y equals zero and solve for x. And then to find the y intercept, substitute x equals zero. Well, I'm not going to say it's all for y because sometimes you don't just have a y equals. Those two rules, that's how you find the intercept. Okay, so we're going to apply that. I'm going to give you another equation. Y equals negative 2x plus your B number. Find and plot. The X and Y intercepts. Catch the line. Okay, so the process is very simple. If you know what to do to get the X intercept and the Y intercept. And it makes perfect sense that when the thing, when the graph passes through the X axis, Y is zero. And when it passes through the Y axis, X is zero. Right there are your rules, right there is the picture. You wanna totally understand that and keep that in front of you when you do the homework, okay? So, illustration here, most of you did pretty well with this. No points of confusion. Okay, so. X intercept, y equals zero. So, zero equals negative two x plus b. Okay, I'm gonna use b equals to seven. A couple of you actually have b equals seven, but I wanna use an odd number. Okay. So that,
three dots. You're going to have to subtract seven from both sides. Make sure you do that step. Another three dots, x equals. Seven halves. And I think a lot of you maybe didn't see that negative sign, which I probably should have written bigger. That's okay. You'll we'll see it when it's on in front of you, but I did have a negative sign back there. So it's going to look a little different than some of your graphs. I want to illustrate how that works. Okay. So the x intercept is seven halves zero. Because y is zero, x is seven halves. If x is seven halves, then y has to equal zero. You plug seven halves in here and should to verify your solution to check. Um, so there's your x intercept. Okay. Then x is zero. And the uh, y intercept, so y equals. This your y intercept is zero seven. You don't have a point seven half seven. Okay. That doesn't give you a point on the graph. If x is seven halves, y doesn't come out to be seven. It comes out to be zero. And we just showed that. Okay, well, to get a graph. Wrap up here real quickly. Just show you one thing about it. Actually, I'll remember this quickly. Yeah. Right. Now, where is x equals seven halves? Well, you have to know that seven halves is three and a half. So if we go out one, two, three, two more, that's really all we need. In this graph. And then we got to go up to seven. So you know, make it, we're going to do the same thing. A is convenient here. We subdivide that. Out. As I showed you before, that works out pretty well. So the x intercept is seven halves zero. Well, seven halves is three and a half. Three and a half is halfway between three and four. So here's the point seven half zero, which of course is three and a half zero. And here's the point zero seven. And now we can look, we can draw a straight line. What's out the four there, but we know what's up. There's a straight line, okay? So just one thing we could do is, now if we know the x value, here's the line where x equals two. And if we take a line, horizontal line through this thing, we see that it appears maybe that y equals three. Okay, well, If x is two, we're going to get two times two is negative four. We're going to add that, here's the equation, to seven, we are going to get three. So now if we do a good estimate for any x value, we can find the y value. For any y value, we can find the x value. So we can actually solve equations involving this function, at least approximately using our graph. Now we'll talk more about that next time. Now, we understand what the intercepts are, understand how you draw the line between the intercepts, through the intercepts, and how you use them. And it's just a quick illustration of how we use it. Also, if you're having trouble with fractions, um, you have three assignments on fractions right at the beginning of the course. You probably need to review those. 
go back and work them again. Refresh yourself because you're going to need it throughout the course. Okay.